Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech. I'm finally home and I'm settled in from the Locotech event and I just wanted to do a summary video about the Locotech hash blades. First, I want to go over some history, uh, then go over some of the slides or information in the slides presented to us at the event, and then wrap up with a summary of my thoughts regarding the hash blade itself, which should be coming sometime in 2024. <laughs> First, let's talk a little bit about Locotech's history. On their investor uh, presentation, and as well as their regular presentation, they say that they were established in 2019. However, we've heard whispers about this specific hardware, so to speak, for many, many years. Um, I'm unable to find the exact article here, but you can see on the Litecoin talk forum, uh, there were some inklings of what was coming or possible back in december 21 2016 loco script asic and then also on bitcoin talk back in 2014 loco tech script asic and you can see even here it has it at point uh 0726 joules per mega hash now i can't find the exact article and that may be dates just from when that thread was created but i do remember in the past how this device was going to come out and that's really one of the reasons why a lot of people, if you're new to this, were upset. What is taking so long? You promised to provide us this uh, unique uh, device that should do very well as far as hashing on the script algorithm for minimized or a reduced power draw compared to other alternatives. Uh, but the reason it's taking so long is because they're actually having to fund and produce this chip themselves. Now, they are a fabulous organization, so that they're not like an Intel or... Uh, TSMC or anything like that so they have to uh, work with a fab right in order to produce these chips and it takes money it takes investment it takes R&D to really fine-tune these chips and that's what they brought it down to is they were actually able uh, to you know get these chips to a production ready state which is why the event happened and we were out there uh, as part of the I guess you could say to, to verify or validate that these chips are in fact real um, so the history predates, even before they, they had a reverse merger with Harmony Chain AS, and if we go to their website, you will see that Harmony Chain AS is a process of changing the name to Loco, uh, Lo Locotech Group AS, and there's been a merger, um, but this talk of this device, this chip, this script miner has been going on for, for quite a few years, hence the reason why some people were upset with the delay in the finalized product but we need to understand the amount of time and investment it took. I mean, you can see the invested capital, the cap, uh, the cash position that they provide in their investor slide. I'm not going to get into that, but just know that it took many, many years. Um, and now here we are at the tail end and we're, we should be getting a final product uh, in 2024. Now, there's even more history that our fellow community members are aware of if you ever wanted to dive down the rabbit hole. But moving on to the chip itself. I'm very intrigued by it, um, and their business model is intending to eventually have other units with this specialized chip that they've been working so hard to develop, such as USB sticks, um, single and dual tube servers or rack servers, etc., like a 1U uh, server rack setup, 2U, and the USB sticks piqued my interest because that's kind of like the Moonlander Apollo uh, from FutureBit, excuse me. Uh, that are script USB miners, but they're not going to stop there. They chosen the format, at least for these hash blades, to be a bunch of ASIC chips. They say here 128 ASIC chips printed on a circuit board with a PCIe slot uh, for plugging into a stationary PC. But more importantly, you could put it into like an OctaMiner uh, 12 GPU case or 8 GPU case or you know your VADA frames, whatever it might be. It would take the place of a GPU on a riser and then your hashing away mining script um whatever coin that might be but the board itself from our event or our meeting is the same size as a gpu it's not going to have any cooler on it whatsoever because the way it's designed and the way it, it you know it's so small or it's such a uh, minor amount of power 145 watts overall over 255 chips 
this PCB is going to be about your standard 275 millimeter, uh, you know, length GPU type format or form factor, something you're very familiar with. And because they designed it in such a way, the PCB itself should wind up dispersing that heat, right? It's just taking the, the, the minor amount of heat that this thing, these chips are producing. And then by having some type of airflow, like a 120 mil uh, fan blowing on it, it will stay nice and cool. So thermal shouldn't be an issue. And it should just ramp up. The chip should just ramp up to its maximum and then continue going. What's even cooler is that these chips um, don't operate in a series like your traditional ASICs. So if one chip goes down, you're not taking taking down the rest of the chips behind it. So for example, on an S9 hash board, if the 23rd chip is bad, everything after 23 or from 23 on is not going to work, but you're still drawing the same amount of power. They called it, I think, smart ASIC design, which we should see here in a slide. It's on a 12 nanometer process or 12 nanometer LP, low power plus. Um, and they did provide us some metrics here. You know, not only did they say, you know, mounting 128 ASICs, but in the event they told us 255, so that might be a different board and maybe a cut down variant of what they're going to release with the current pre-orders of Hashblade. Uh, but then he also provided us some information. Now you'll see this number right here. So 0 0.67 joules per mega hash at the chip level. But if we look at some of the history on Bitcoin talk, they originally had 0 0.0726 joules per mega hash. So that number has changed as they went through the development process and made some adjustments. And then I also calculated, and I'm kind of in the same ballpark, right? So basically I had it at around 2000, uh, mega hash so that's two giga hash let's do uh 145 divided by 1999 because it's 1.99 giga hash when I mean, that equals about 0 0.072 joules per mega hash and if you really want to know what each chip is doing even though they say here performance is 15.6 mega hash at uh 1.4 watts i did the map and i already shared this with my colleagues it's about 7.8 mega hash per chip 255 right um, and they're drawing only about 0.568 of a watt. So not like less than a watt. So I'm very intrigued by this chip, very efficient. Um, and I'm intrigued, especially by the different form factors that they might roll out. Um, but we just have to wait and see how things go uh, and how things proceed forward. Now, uh, there are some additional questions that I presented them offline. I worked to get that information addressed as soon as possible. That won't probably be to late, uh, you know, Q2 or early, uh, late Q1, 2024, but bear with me. But you can see here the dimensions of a single slot card. So it is a single slot GPU card or the form factor set 275 millimeters uh, wide or long by 125 millimeters high or tall. Uh, if you're looking at GPU and then you can see the numbers here. So it's, you know, plus or minus 10% at 145 watts, 1.99 giga hash. So very, very efficient. They provided us additional information on these sheets, including their, you know, their team, uh, the, you know, marketing position as far as mining script. Dogecoin is still one of the most profitable cryptocurrencies you can mine. Uh, but compared to other options out there, this device is super, super efficient. However, is it something you should consider getting? Well, let me break it down for you as far as numbers, right? I did this with endless mining and a stream. If you bought an L7, the 9,500 uh, uh, mega hash one, or the 9.5 giga hash, you're basically paying 47 cents per mega hash. Whereas with the Logotech hash blade, you're paying one to one, or about one dollar per mega hash. Again, 2,000 giga hash, um, and it's about two thousand dollars to pre-order these right now. Things might get better, but this is a brand new company. Right. And with brand new companies, they don't have the back end support, as one might say, of a larger company like Bitmain. If your ASIC went down, there's a, a plethora of ASIC repair services or providers out there that you can rely on. Um, if something goes bad, you know, do you have to send the hash blade in to them to get repaired for them, you know, for them to set? Because the chips on some of the Bitmain uh, ASICs are out there. All right, if you have a bad chip or if you have a bad PCI, uh, yeah, PIC chip or a bad MOSFET, whatever it might be, 
there are replacement parts out there that you can order from Alibaba or various resources, Zeus Mining, get it and replace it yourself if you really wanted to. How would that be with Locotech? I'm assuming that would, that would roll out eventually and it would be repair services or something offered from their team. But this is a newer company and a lot of people uh, kind of make faces or are disgruntled about that. But this is the same thing right with ice river a lot of people weren't sure if they could trust ice river and now ice river is selling cast by miners like there's no tomorrow along with bitmain obviously bitmain is outstripping them as far as marketing potential and, and units sold but that's because they're just a huge company bitmain really does have a large market share of the asic uh industry in general but this is a different opportunity a different chance that one can participate and mine script more efficiently like this will replace a lot of those high power, annoying, loud, right, ASICs um, that one might have. Now, for example, I would need five of these hash blades to equal or to beat one L7. And so the price of each hash blade is obviously going to be a decent investment to outweigh what an L7 can do. But you just need to pick and choose what's best for you and your setup. From my understanding, this thing should be able to um you know hash away no problems off rip the chip automatically ramps up to its set target megahertz frequency thermals are not going to be a problem uh we could add little mosfet coolers to it but it's not going to be necessary according to what i heard and we'll start to learn more and more information as a matter of fact stay tuned and get subscribed to the channel because as soon as I have more information or actually have a hash blade to show off to you, I will provide that to you as soon as possible. But I am very intrigued by this unit overall. Now, with that being said, $2,000 is a bit high for the target I would have liked to see this hash blade uh, you know, be sold at. But it's going to be up to you, the end user, to do what's best for you, your setup, your configuration, and your plans for your farm or your at-home farm. But I am very much intrigued by the various components and form factor of this particular device. The smart ASIC function functionalities include real-time uh, diagnostics, self-optimizing clock frequencies, and reduction of power wastage is, is just to name a few. With the prospects of AI applications in the future, those are just among the few that make me very intrigued by this hash blade. And so we'll see how things pan out in the long run with Locotech. The team themselves, meeting with them, talking to them, getting to know them, is one of the strong factors as to why I believe uh, this would be a good product because they didn't try to sales pitch me. They just wanted to show me. They wanted to show us. Here is the chip. This is a cut down variant. Yes, it was on a demo board, not the finalized production chip. Um, and we were able to play around with it. It could connect to pools. Uh, the miners uh, were, were ran through batch files. So some of the same thing that we've seen with other mining applications. Uh, I would be intrigued to see the final revision of the Locotech miner. If there's going to be a GUI to it, or is it just going to help you generate your batch files to mine to whatever pool? because we did test a number of pools, uh, but because the hash rate was so small on this particular, uh, pr not pr again, non-production chip, a demo chip, but the validation of the chip itself. Uh, so not what's going to be on the hash blade. I don't know how many times I can say that and, and emphasize that. Uh, was so small at about four, 480 hashes that while the miner showed up at the pool, the hash rate did not. We probably would have to let that sit for a very long time because it's very insignificant in the grand scheme of things. A lot of people, a lot of farms are mining with L7s and large and have large uh, walls of these uh, Litecoin or Script ASICs or Dogecoin ASICs. So for 480 hash, that's not real. That's that's like a, a drop in the in the in the ocean, really. But let me know your thoughts down below. I know that this is a conversation that I've already seen with many of you through my live streams or through my colleagues that there's some pros and cons, but there's pros and cons to everything. You're upset about the pre-order. Well, that's the world we live in now. S21 comes out from Bitmain, everybody's all on it to pre-order. Ice River came out, some people were skeptical, but everybody was still pre-ordering these Casper miners, right? We live in a pre-order world. Call of Duty, Diablo 4, pre-order, Kickstarter, whatever it is. People uh, have a idea 
or they have a prototype and they need to get it to the world and by you pre-ordering it helps them do that the fab they're going to use to produce these chips i'm not sure has been mentioned publicly but it is a known fab and amd has used them before why are they on 12 nanometer uh you know lp plus well that's because the line for those that production is not as profound as one using a five nanometer or seven nanometer meaning there's not as many market orders so the the weight on production or the line to the 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 amount of money needed to get in line to produce these chips um isn't as uh large as it would be for example five nanometer seven nanometer and so on so i wish nothing but the best to the local tech team thank you for having me uh and the rest of my colleagues you, the end user, my viewer, know that I will always remain objective. So I continue moving forward, intrigued by this device, but being real. I do not have the $2,000 to spend on this hash blade. But if you, a farm, a small farmer, have the capital to do so, this is a very efficient device. Check it out. Consider it. I'll have it linked down in the description. Or you should have gotten an email where you can pre-order. I think they would go public soon. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But just follow them on their socials. Keep an eye on the team. Ben's a good guy. Uh, Irving and Christian, great guys. And I look forward to talking to the chip, uh, the, the the engineer behind the chips um, and the engineers behind the PCB and power delivery in the future. So stay tuned and I will catch you in the next one. Hit the like button on the way out. Get subscribed, as I mentioned. Hit the notification button to stay up to date as well. Check out additional links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here. And you just have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.